he says he feels so much for you and that you're so different from all other women he's met and he's promising more more time more commitment more inclusion into his friends group but it just doesn't happen and surprisingly you keep investing in him even as you catch yourself making up excuse after excuse until one day it hits you like a tour of bricks that you really resent him and worse you resent yourself for being naive and for wasting your time if this has ever happened to you or worse it's happening to you right now in this video i'm going to show you how to regain your power when his promises don't match his behavior let's face it if you're in the middle of a relationship or a situation with someone who has promised a lot of things and there's an emotional connection there's a chemistry with them and there's already a projection taking place in terms of what you think this might be but things have started to shift maybe they never took off to begin with and you're starting to recognize that this guy has a lot of promises but he's not really following through on actions and it's starting to freak you out but in the midst of you freaking out you continue investing in him and continue giving him the benefit of the doubt and continue giving him some time for him to figure out his stuff but it's coming to the point where you're feeling like you're wasting your time or like you're being taken for a ride if you're starting to feel that way it's time for you to do something about it before i share with you one of the seven steps i suggest going through i'm going to tell you why most likely right now you are stuck in a situation the first reason why this is happening is because you're deep down most likely afraid of being alone and when that happens, we tend to make decisions that are of the scarcity type. And that means that you lower your standards and you won't speak up and you won't press hard for what you want. And you'll tell yourself you're being generous when in reality, you're simply scared to ask for something that might set the person in question into a path of saying, I'm out. Second reason is because you are afraid of seeming like you failed like maybe you've gone through a bunch of relationships that haven't worked and maybe you were really excited about it worse you actually told everyone that you care about that you met this really great guy he's so special he's so different and now that there's the possibility of this not working out you don't want to feel like you failed you want to feel like this didn't work out that you didn't give it your best and there's a bit of confusion going on Third is there's a fear unconsciously of not finding someone better. And sometimes we tend to fixate on some aspect of maybe it's the way she looked at you. Maybe it's the way she looks physically. Maybe it's the level of chemistry. At some level, you have created a story in your mind that says this one feature is worth the mirage of BS that I'm receiving from him because it's so special, so different, so unique that I, I need to continue exploring it. And the last one is misguided guilt. Misguided guilt means that you might feel like if you set some stronger boundary or you change your standards or if you start asking for what you want or if you say, I'm out, that you're not giving the person a real shot, that you're being unreasonable, that you're being slightly mean, that you're being selfish. And this misguided guilt is causing you to extend a situation that could have easily changed if you had the courage to tell yourself what's really going on and the vocabulary to express what your needs are to him. So what I want to do right now is share the seven steps that I'd suggest if you find yourself in the middle of a situation like this, or if you've gone through this and you want to prevent this from happening, here's the steps I suggest. I'm not saying that they're easy, but they're doable. And when you take one courageous step into the direction of what you want, you can make big changes in your life, sometimes in a short amount of time. The first one is ask yourself an honest question, which is what do you really want? And forget about this guy right now. If you knew you could get what you wanted, what would you be wanting right now? And again, I'm not talking about rainbows and sunshine. I'm talking about what are some of the qualities you're looking for in a human being? What are some of the basics that you're needing in order to be able to open your heart, to have conversations, to explore connecting with someone, to spend quality time, to have a shot of growing into a deeper reality with someone. Number two is kind of painful, but so necessary. It's a reality check. If you don't ask the question, what do I think I can get? But you ask the question, what do I really want? And then you 
recognize in a reality check that there's a giant gap between what you want and what's happening right now. That reality check, if you do it in writing, sometimes it's even easier to just be able to see the truth of what's going on. It's going to punch you a little bit. It's going to feel a little bit painful. You're going to feel like there's a lot of room right now for improvement. And that's okay. Use that pain. Use that discrepancy between the life you want and the life you have right now to create a bit of hunger to start doing something to change it. Now, here's something that you probably won't want to do if you're in the middle of something like this, but it's absolutely necessary. And without this step, the other steps might become impossible. And that's spend more quality time alone. You're telling yourself in the midst of this thing going on that what you need is to spend more time with them. And maybe that's true, but what needs to happen is you need to spend more quality time with yourself so you develop the courage and the strength to recognize if I'm having a great time with myself and the time I've spent with them is really not matching, then again, the reality of those two experiences is going to start helping you to create the courage to have the conversations that are needed. But if the time you spend alone is spent in a mediocre way or is spent in a low level emotional state, then he is your sunshine. He is your oxygen. He is the thing that creates excitement and fulfillment and joy in your life when you're failing to do that for yourself. And the notion that he is the one who can fix that when you're not doing it for yourself is simply an illusion. Which leads me to my next step is you need to study as much as you humanly possibly can right now about codependency. You need to learn what this is. You need to learn what it looks like. If you have a chance to go to a support group, take a chance and go there to get a chance to hear what people are saying because you might find yourself in situations that are similar or better, you might find someone who is in a situation like the one you'll be a year from now unless you make a shift and the visceral connection with what's going on for that human being will wake you up a little bit to something must change. If you take some time to study what codependency is and start recognizing the specific ways in which you might right now be self-soothing, not through yourself, but through this person, you might be trying to meet some of the needs that need to be met with yourself through the other human being and how you're giving your power away, then the awareness of it will be a great first step into making a shift. Now, before I share my last three points, which are really important if you want to create a shift in your life, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not aware of the root cause where you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every walk of life, every kind of challenge you can imagine, and helping those women to create life partnerships and marriages. And I've gotten the learnings of what it took for them to create that result and put together a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link on the description and you're going to find a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and in 60 seconds, you'll have two things. The answer to the elusive question, why you're still single and a custom report based on your specific blind spot that's going to show you the number one action you can take today to attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. The fifth step is to scratch the record. What do I mean by that? Is something must change. And depending upon where you are emotionally, depending upon where you are in terms of courage, depending upon where you are in terms of the questions that I asked you at the beginning or the fears you have about being alone and not finding someone better, is you need to start making some changes. And you may not be able to start with the toughest, most challenging conversation, asking for all that you want to that human being, but you might be able to set one standard. You might be able to change one rule that you have for how you show up or what you ask of them. If you start making small changes, you start saying no when you mean no. If you start calling out behavior that is inconsistent, the more you start showing up for yourself, not in a mean way, but in a way where you're being clear, one degree more courage, one degree more clarity, one degree higher standard than the one you used to have, then he's going to notice the difference and he's going to either self-disqualify and if that's what happens through you setting a very small single new rule or standard, then that's what needs to happen. Or it's going to open up the conversation for you to be able to start expressing that the old way of doing things no longer works for you. That's what a new boundary does. The next step is crucial. And if you find yourself in a situation like this, I'm going to be as direct as I can with you. This might not change through you watching one or a hundred videos. You need to get some help. And that help, depending upon severity, might be therapy or might be coaching. 
but gain some guidance to get courageous, to express what you want, to set new boundaries, to be able to hold yourself true to those boundaries, and if need be, be willing to walk away is something that most human beings, if they're in the midst of something challenging, will not do for themselves. So get yourself courageous enough to raise your hand that's trembling and say, I need help. And the last step is to understand that some things need to die to be reborn in a way that are healthier for you. So ending things with someone doesn't always mean that the relationship is ending. It means that the old relationship is ending and a new relationship has now a chance to be reborn with new rules, with new possibilities, with new standards, and with a new level of commitment that goes beyond the, I say this is what I'm gonna do, but don't do it. If you want something of this nature to change, you're gonna have to step up for yourself. You're gonna have to take some risks. You're gonna have to be a little bit more courageous. I hope you find this helpful and useful. This is challenging, but it's doable. And I know it's doable because I've helped many women to make those shifts. If this resonates with you, it would mean the world to me and to my channel, because this is the only way I can grow and reach more women. If you click like and subscribe, far too many women watch the videos and don't hit subscribe, but it makes a huge difference for me. It's free. <laughs> also, if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games or stupid techniques, make sure to watch the next video right here.